nice to meet everyone. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, so, and I'll play this in a bit in a bit of a second. But what is um, Superstars? So, I guess the big question is is that the professional networking space, as you see here, it says next generation professional networking, all video. The professional networking space, I think we all agree, has long been dominated by LinkedIn. I'm sure either most of the people in the room have a LinkedIn profile, but I guess I will ask a question to the room and you can raise your hand or just shout, what's the number two professional network that you use after LinkedIn for professional networking? And I'm open to, I don't know if it's muted, but I'll, I will take sound. If anyone can say another network that you use, not named LinkedIn for professional networking. Alignable. I don't know. I couldn't make that out. Uh, Alignable. Alignable. Okay. Lunch club. Okay. Facebook. Hey, it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> it has happened. Okay. So the ones that you said is, you know, lunch club is kind of used for one-on-one -on -one introductions. Good answer. Alignable, I have used, is uh, also a good answer. But, you know, those are text-based or I guess match make, matchmaking based services. And what Superstars really kind of came about was what if we could create the first video professional social network, all user videos, all professional related content, almost like a professional network meets TikTok kind of platform where it would be able to show highlights of your job, your workspace, your commentary in the industry, your business inside of the day, and showing your professional skills in action, all this visual professional content in one app, all created by users. So we started building it actually before COVID started. And uh, I know we only have a little bit of time. I don't know even know if the sound will carry through a screen share, but it will play. So I don't even know, is the sound carrying or not at all? Yeah. And if no, okay, so that's fine. So I'll play it here in the background, as you can see, um, while it plays, and then I'll just talk a little bit more about the app. But the idea of the app, as you can see, an all video facing platform to connect professionally with others, where people can share professional clips, similar to what you think of like a TikTok or an Instagram Reels, of like these full screen types of videos of, uh, you know, created by users. And, you know, what's powerful is that, you know, we, we launched the app about four months ago in February, uh, you know, after two, two plus years of building, you know, coding and development to build it. It is on App Store. It is on Google Play. If you go here to the website, superstars.co, you can see this link with the direct links, or you just go to App Store, search or Google Play and type superstars and you'll find the app. Um, but what we've built is really quite a powerful platform. You know, in just three and a half months, we've had thousands and thousands of user videos that have been posted on the platform. We are backed by NYU Stern. You probably see NYU's logo there at the bottom. We have a state government partnership with um, CareerSource, the official workforce development arm of the state of Florida. And, um, you know, we've done everything with 100% word of mouth, all viral growth, um, you know, zero spent on marketing and user acquisition. And, you know, this is really the future of professional networking. You know, this platform is the future and we're excited to really bring it here to uh, to the mainstream. And again, as you see, it's taking, you know, the, the video loop that's going through, it's going through different parts of our app. So we have video resume. This is endorsement videos from your peers. You know, we showed you earlier, you know, story videos, um, you know, so these are all, this is again, video endorsements from peers, this feature. Here's uh, someone that, uh, you know, from 1 Million Cups, actually Daytona, Joe Fiel, but this is his elevator pitch video. This is here how you can network with other users by professional level, network with them by professional industry, be able to kind of then, you know, visit their profile, see their profile. I mean, I think now it will take you through a little bit of, a, of someone's profile. But the idea here is that this is a fully video powered platform which makes professional networking much more interesting and makes it much more powerful. She's an author for children's books. These are some of the full screen videos that she's created, video endorsements that she's received, and even her video resume. Um, so we're really kind of excited about what we've built. You know, I, I know when I, um, you know, what I always like to end my presentation with is, you know, where we've come in the two and a half years is that we are live on App Store, we're live on Google Play. We've worked at it two and a half years. Got a solid team. We're both repeat founders, each with an exit. 
you know, we have um, angel investors already backing the company. Um, you know, we've actually oversubscribed our first tranche, you know, going to uh, complete the remainder of our early seed round. And, uh, you know, we feel that this is really something that we're excited to, to bring to the table. This is really, you know, the future of networking, as you can see it here. It's much more visually powerful and interesting, I'm sure, as the video is playing than what you would think of a text first platform. But, you know, when I asked the question in the beginning, which is, OK, you know, you mentioned some other names, but what other platform in professional networking is a video first platform? And that the fact that that answer can't really be answered is where Superstars comes in, gives us this opportunity to really, you know, create something that's quite amazing that has, you know, pun intended, really, you know, superstar DNA to become a unicorn. Um, so I, I always like to be respectful of time, um, but that is the, uh, that's kind of our presentation. I'll just click here, um, I guess as that loads just show you a bit of the App Store page. You're all, of course, welcome to download the app. It's 100% free. Um, but, you know, here is, uh, you know, in our ending page, you know, we have a question, a fun resume question that is built into our app. What makes you a superstar? So everyone can have their answer of what makes you a professional superstar. And it's kind of cool to be able to see this video content of others and professionally engage. I don't know why the App Store didn't load. Okay, great. Uh, uh, I, I'll kick off with the first question. Sure. I know in the uh, in the beginning of social media, uh, HR professionals were struggling with how do we deal with EEOC possible violations when people are putting up photos of themselves. And the whole point of, of corporate hiring years before that was to anonymize people. So there wasn't any sort of unconscious bias in hiring. So how do you deal with that? We've kind of thrown that wide open where that's that can't be stopped. I think I think the fair question to that is, you know, the world has changed. And, you know, the, in 20 years ago, you know, it was very different. What so, you know, when Facebook came out, social media was very different. Um, you know, LinkedIn came out or was founded in 2002. It's a different world in today's world. Everything, at least in the younger generation, you know, Gen Z millennials, it's all video. That's how they connect these days, you know, to others. That's, you know, why TikTok and Instagram are such powerful platforms is because, you know, their core user, you know, Gen Z and millennials, 18 to 34, that's, oh, okay, um, that's how they, uh, they connect is through video. Now, what we feel Superstars does is that it actually streamlines and enhances the hiring process. You're now able to see someone's video resume, see their elevator pitch video. You're able to actually see the soft skills of who a person is, you know, to complement their existing LinkedIn profile. So you can see, do they fit our company culture? Do they have the right, you know, you know, I guess you could say the right fit to be a solid part of our, our, our company organization. You know, you all, you know, you hear that the person was amazing on paper, but not the right fit with our company culture. We kind of break down that barrier and say, by looking at someone's video profile, professional profile, you really get a sense of who they are. You know that you're going to get a high quality first round interview when you know that you already have a strong sense of their personality, how they communicate, do they have confidence in their voice, you know, all these things that we probably instinctively pick up when you meet someone in person, you can tell a lot by looking at someone's videos of how they present themselves professionally. So I actually don't see it as a, as a negative bias, I actually see it as a positive way to streamline, you know, the hiring process where you really connect with the professionals that you know are going to be a solid fit with your professional, um, your, your company culture. Great. Any other questions? Okay. So what's, what's your business model? I, so I, you've got the app, right? And am I, are we correct in assuming that you're trying to be like the, the, the TikTok of professional networking? And, and so you're, you offer it for free and you're making your money, what, through advertising and data or what? Great question. So the, the revenue model would be through a jobs tab or jobs marketplace where employers would post jobs on the platform powered by video. Um, and we'd be able to monetize the SaaS platform that way. And then the second would be as to what you pointed would be um, in-app advertising where employers and companies could advertise on the Superstars app, and they'd be able to actually reach their defined customer. Because we collect professional data points on our users, 
we could really offer employers a very targeted filtering platform that really doesn't exist on some of the other social media platforms because one, it's a professional audience, and two, we collect some professional data points that the others don't ca uh, don't capture. Okay. Can we integrate with LinkedIn? Like, could I populate my profile with my LinkedIn data? So, great question. Not yet. Uh, hopefully, that's coming soon in the uh, you know post uh, post beta version. But you know, again, what I would say is that our platform is entirely a video first platform, as you saw most of what your LinkedIn profile is probably a text-based profile. So the text part wouldn't carry over to superstars because that's not the medium of content that we've built into our app. Um, you know, could your profile picture and maybe some other things carry? Sure. But, you know, the, the main content wouldn't have much to carry because we don't really support that kind of text on the app. You know, we really focus on video creation, natively created videos that are recorded, created and shared on the platform or uploaded from your gallery. But, you know, again, the focus is video. So unless your profile is full of videos that you've created, um, I don't know how much it would add to uh, actually blend, you know, one, you know, the goal is, can we complement your LinkedIn profile as best in the business at showing your electronic resume, who you are professionally, your resume outline? best in the business at what they do. But, you know, the our vision of superstars is that it would complement your LinkedIn profile or amplify your existing profile with the video first profile of who you are. What are you posting? Your video resume, elevator pitch, your video endorsements, like all these things that complement who you are professionally is built into our platform the way it's packaged, wrapped, designed. And that would really show, okay, I have a good sense of, you know, who Scott is, I got it, I see his resume outline, but now let me see the visual side, the video side of who you are. And that's really what's missing on the current platform and where we feel our platform has opportunity. I'll add one more point, which is quite powerful. Forbes did a study where they found that 91% of consumers now prefer visual content over text-based media. 91%, that's over nine out of 10 users, consumers want video-based content over text-based content. And, you know, LinkedIn is an amazing platform, but it's not a video first platform. And that's really where the opportunities for superstars coming in as that first video platform for professional networking, really designing the next gen professional social network, all using video. Okay. Um, Tina. Oh, I saw. I have a question about um, the video format, um, because right now I'm figuring out how to move Pinterest idea pins over to Instagram Reels. Are your videos also portable across multiple platforms? I want to piggyback on that. Uh, can we share videos to social media like Twitter and say, Hey, come look at my superstars video. So coming soon. So that's actually an active development where you'd be able to cross pollinate. Um, and we hope then by August that will actually be live and operational, which would be exciting. So that is in development. It's actually uh, we, we did an early testing of seeing it. But uh, by August, that will actually be live where you could your content on superstars. You could cross pollinate on other social media platforms that you have. Okay. Um, Scott I think wanted to know, uh, he asked over the chat, even though he's in the back of the room, uh, are you reaching out to existing LinkedIn influencers to create your user base? There are many who are using video on the LX platform with great success. Um, so yes, and we do have actually some that are quite major social media influencers with over a million personal, over a million personal followers. Um, but yes, um, you know, the goal ultimately is you know, can we get a big audience and build the critical mass of users where now instead of having thousands of users, we now have, you know, millions of users. And that's obviously the uh, the momentum train. Again, we've only been live for, you know, three and a half, you know, barely four months almost uh, since we launched the platform. So I guess every platform has to start somewhere. But yes, you know, we've reached out. We, again, have some people that are on their own, you know, personal platforms have over a million users uh, I'm sorry, over a million followers on Instagram and other channels. So that has been a very uh, positive start so far in our process. I think I saw, is that Josh, your hand up there? Hey, Tucker, thanks for sharing. Uh, why 
why do you care so much about this? And why are you the right person to bring this to the world? So it's it's interesting, you know, I I find that in the current space of social platforms and networking, you know, the earlier question was, what is that mainstream number two? You know, in social networking, you'll say TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Discord, Twitter, you know, you can easily rat off six or seven names without hesitation that people would say, yeah, those are big social media platforms for social networking. But when it comes to professional networking, I was like, you know, people are more than just a resume or an electronic resume. They're more than just the title of their job or the name of their company. They have skills, they have talent, they can showcase what they do well professionally, but there's no medium that really hosts that, that customizes for professional related content powered by video. And that was kind of the deficiency in the current platform was, well, someone has great skill, you know, I have great skills, but you know, I'm more than just a job title and a name of a company of where I've worked. And how could I show that and have people see that? And that was something that I found that was missing, which kind of spurred the idea of like, let's build the video version or the LinkedIn meets TikTok kind of platform. Now, in terms of our team, we're both repeat founders, each with an exit. Um, you know, my co-founder CTO, he built a social media platform that scaled to 250,000 users. He's a three-time CTO, was previously CTO of a VC-backed company. You know, I was previously, you know, founder CEO of a health, a health tech company that um, was featured on CNBC as the Uber of pediatricians. Um, so we both have that great tech background experience in our leadership team, both, you know, again, repeat founders, both with an exit. And that's why we're really excited to uh, to build this as you know, the, uh, the future of professional networking, this platform is the future. All right, we got a, oh. another uh, question it online from Trevor, uh, who based on his goatee looks like my twin. <laughs> goatee and hair it like, actually does. <laughs> How many followers slash users have signed up or are signing up monthly? And what demographics are the users? Yeah, so I will say that over half the users are in the Gen Z, you know, university student demographic. Now, that's the most powerful and active demographic of social media, which is great because that's growth. Um, but over half our users are Gen Z, and about 65% of the users are Gen Z and, you know, millennials, young professionals. Um, so that actually is market with what the core user is of LinkedIn and the core user of, of Instagram is of that 18 to 32, 18 to 34 kind of, you know, bracket, you know, in the three and a half months that we've, that we've launched, you know, like I said, we've had over, you know, thousands of user videos created. We've had almost 250,000 likes, comments, and follows that have been posted on the platform through our engagement. And um, that's quite powerful. I will say that that's something that I think is pretty rare. You know, like what I would share is that if, if you were to take yourself right now and go on LinkedIn for 60 minutes, could you find a thousand user created videos on LinkedIn? And if you go to LinkedIn's home feed, could you find it? And it would be a challenge. It's not, I mean, could you, maybe, but it's not as easy to say, if I go on LinkedIn right now, I'll find a thousand user created videos in 60 minutes. And on Superstars, in less than five minutes, I could show you a thousand user created videos. I couldn't watch it, of course, but I could show you a thousand user created videos, professional related videos, of course, in less than five minutes on our platform because we built it in our certain way as a video first platform. All right, Tina. Oh, I think there's one more question. Yep. So um, videos are nice, but the question then is, how do you search superstars to find videos from the people you're interested in connecting with? Are you using keywords, hashtags? Yes, so we do use yep. So we do use hashtags. That is something that we've built into the into the platform. Our smart algorithm also shows you, you know, when you're on our, our main feed where you're seeing videos full screen like TikTok or like Reels, our smart algorithm actually adapts and learns to know which videos you're liking, which videos you're commenting on, which users you're following, so that it will show you more content of what they of what the algorithm predicts you are likely to watch and follow and like in the next video. 
So that's part of our secret sauce magic behind the scenes is that when you're actually, you know, scrolling videos, you know, your activity and engagement with video A of what you're liking, following, commenting will determine what video B is going to be when you scroll up and see the next video. We have two follow. Okay, great. Yeah, two more follow ups. That sounds very social, though. It doesn't sound like what I normally do on LinkedIn in terms of professional networks. And one day I want to talk, find realtors, and another day I want to find. So that's, on, so that's a different feature. So on our network tab is where you'd be able to search for users by professional industry and search for users by professional level. So you can say, I only want to look at people that are in the real estate industry, maybe in the real estate industry that are in executive and C-level positions. You just tap three buttons and it will only show you the users that identify for those filters on the, you know, on the page where you can then see their elevator pitch video. You can see their video resume. You can go to their profiles and see what they're posting. Um, but we have that ability in real time to actually see exactly the type of user that you want to connect with professionally. Great, done. I, I gotta tell you, I love this. I've gone nuts over it. This is terrific. Uh, I got a friend of mine who did a similar thing. She just skipped the online piece and she's gonna cry when she sees this because she's just missed it. And so I think it's fantastic. I think the 1099 independent contractor world is gonna explode all over this thing because I could easily see if you're an independent contractor out there, you've gotta be on this because LinkedIn is okay for that. The rest of those things are worthless for that. This is going to be perfect. I only have one complaint. I hate this name. Um, because when I went to download, and it downloaded easily and beautifully, but I'm sitting here playing with it because there's only 500 superstars out on that app store. And so just like Facebook wasn't originally called Facebook, and a lot of things weren't, I, I would just think about a better name for this. But I got to tell you, conceptually, uh, God, I love this. This is going to be too cool. Yeah. Thank you. Well, th uh, thanks for that. We'll definitely take that. Th thank you. That's uh, that means that we worked, you know, two and a half years on building this uh, the back end coding and development. So. <laughs> so I'll I'll go to the final question. But I will say uh, I did have a little trouble finding it in the uh, in the app store because there's a lot of games and things that are superstars. Uh, when I did superstars business. Uh, or I think it did superstars networking, then it showed up more easily with just superstars. Uh, so you might tell people to search on the app for superstars networking. Hmm. At least when you're telling people, search for this term. Um, it's strange because on app store search, you know, when I tested it just a few days ago, we were number two in organic. Um, so I will check again. Maybe we lost our, a few spots since, uh, you know, since uh, sure. earlier uh, this week, but we used to rank as number two in the app store search for the term superstars. But that is interesting that and they, Google. they work like Google and then it shows you your <laughs> listing, but not everybody else. So I don't know. I, it could be that I was just lazy and didn't swipe in. So the final question, uh, Shocker, is what can we as a community do for you? Um, cool. Th thank you for asking that question. Well, I guess then there's two things, you know, and we're in advanced discussions with major, you know, venture capital groups to invest in superstars and really kind of scale this to the next level. I guess, you know, my two asks would be is one, would everyone in the room, again, it's 100% free, be willing to download the app and create a profile? Josh there has already created a profile. He's added videos. You know, he can be a, a you know, a, a nice, uh, you know, iron pillar of, uh, of the app there in the room of telling you that, you know, it's real, it's not, you know, it's actually, you know, great content. But um, if everyone in the room is willing to create a profile, you know, the, uh, the, the biggest draws for us to succeed in raising our venture capital, again, we've raised a angel round is, um, you know, user growth, and then an ability where you can, um, you know, monetize the product. So we've started working, like I shared earlier, on building our jobs marketplace into the app. It'll be a first of its kind platform to uh, post jobs all powered by video. Um, but if we're able to, in the room, if all of you are willing to download the app, create a profile, that would be quite powerful and really helpful. And then the second would be is if anyone in the room angel invests or knows people that angel invest you know we again we have solid group of angel investors already in the company um you know we're opening to uh you know welcoming 
open to welcoming other angels that want to join our current investors. They have MBAs from Harvard, Wharton, MIT Sloan. So very tough guys that are already, in, and gals, um, that are already investors in the company and the business. And uh, we would welcome other angels that, you know, love the product, love the vision, love the platform. And that if anyone knows or personally angel invests, would love to uh, connect further as well as hope to uh, see you on the platform and see you on the app. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to hear from BJ Christian of iSports. So good morning, everybody. And morning. thank you for the opportunity to talk about iSports. And thanks, Josh, for your review yesterday. So uh, iSports is a sports software SaaS platform. Or it, uh, and what we do is we connect the sports ecosystem of athletes, fans, organizations, and coaches. That's what we do for a living. Just to kind of help you with the whole uh, sports ecosystem that, that we work with, we have the national governing bodies like the USA Hockey, USA Football, the Olympics teams, and then you have the clubs and the leagues. The clubs and the leagues are uh, the clubs across all the districts, states, cities, as well as leagues include the private uh, professional organizations like NFL, NHL. That's one set of clubs and leagues. Then you have teams associated with all these clubs and leagues. And obviously the players who play with them, those are the athletes. And all of this is encapsulated by fans because without fans, there's nobody watching the game. So the ecosystem of sports is, is, is a huge ecosystem. And then this is not only in the United States, any Olympics playing uh, country will have a similar structure of organizations and players and coaches uh, to compete. So this is the whole sports ecosystem. And what we noticed is in the last four to five years, we've been doing professional services for the sports organizations. And from there, we found a lot of gaps in, in, uh, in, in those organizations. One is a lot of these organizations are run by volunteers. If you take clubs and teams and things, a lot of organizations with volunteers and self-made software, which can, one is they don't, they are not up to the current technology standards, security standards, and also the data they, they collect is, is in point systems. They don't integrate and the data doesn't flow. And on top of it, when COVID hit, they were just stuck in the, in the tracks, no digital transformation. So basically no training, no coaching. Uh, they were just not able to move forward. And that was something which we noticed and we thought, hey, that's a big gap where we could potentially help our clients. And finally, there is a lot of performance data that we are required in sports organizations today, how well a player performs, uh, scoring and things like that, uh, as well as data analytics understanding who plays what sports, which state can have a growth in sports, those kinds of data is not available readily. So those are some of the problems and opportunities that we found. And we thought, hey, we could potentially answer it. And one of our uh, thoughts was, let's create a SaaS platform uh, which connects the sports organizations, athletes, fans, and uh, coaches. By create, and by doing SaaS, you're kind of bringing bringing in the total cost of ownership for these organizations. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you're able to provide the best of breed technology. Uh, and if you notice one more thing is all sports wants to grow. They want to grow, they want to help uh, more people play the sports, enjoy the sports. But what they miss is they don't know where to grow. They have the intention to grow, but they don't know where to grow. So one of the areas we focus is, we've tried to find the underserved communities who want to play the sports, but they don't have the way to go get the necessary uh, 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 kits and, and places to really play the sport. So as an underlying current of our, our company, we focus on how do we connect these sports and people who want to play sports. And for example, you are hockey, ice hockey, the kits are very expensive, but you are USA hockey wants to free, provide free kits. They just have to find who wants the free kits. And we, are, and we provide solutions around that, like try hockey for free and things like that. And you can similarly provide such programs for pretty much all the sports. But you can bring the, the users and, and 
And for my last and final, pricing is a ma major factor. So we are trying to bring a SaaS platform, which has got a, a small subscription fee and a transaction fee in, uh, included, and then we move from that. So our uh, bridging the gap focuses athletes, teams, coaches, organization, and fans. So we're bringing the whole uh, ecosystem together. And as I had mentioned earlier, uh, SaaS model kind of ele elevates the pain of having an IT infrastructure, uh, gives you a better user experience because you're, going, you're building for scale and uh, you are able to provide uh, uh, automation, which currently, if you, you wouldn't believe, there are organizations which have 600,000 members and still use spreadsheets to manage certain aspects of their organization. So, uh, so that is a lot of uh, potential benefits for the users and stakeholders. So what are the products we provide? We, as we mentioned earlier, we are trying to connect an ecosystem, which is basically not one product. Today, we have come up with five products, but in five years, we might have 20 different products. The whole thought process is you need to address the various aspects of the ecosystem. The first ones are the mega ones, which we felt was the most important, which is the member management system, which is used by the national governing bodies to manage the whole sports uh, across uh, the whole country. Uh, followed by learning management for coaches and athletes. All athletes have to go through safe sport training. They have to go through, uh, uh, referees have to go through certifications to be a referee. So they need a learning management system. Uh, event management is if you have to participate in an event, you want to play a sport, you have to register for an event that the sports is providing. Uh, club management goes to teams and clubs and league level. So you are, so there's various hierarchy of things and the club management handles a club. Any club uh, can, can use the software to manage their teams. And last but not least, there is no organization today who can bring this along with the fans. With, you know, the fans do, are not members. The fans don't have to get uh, uh, coaching on a certain sports. How do they get engaged? That's why we bring in our social media app, which brings the fans together with fan engagement and also networking uh, fans, including sports recruitment. We have apps, uh, we are building functionalities where I play a sport, I can pr pretty much put a video of how well I'm doing it and, a, and, a, and a, referee, a coach can come and pick me up and have that discussion. Because today there is no social media which is focused only on sports. And with us providing all these products, we already have members who are part of our system will automatically translate or transfer into our social media apps. Uh, I've got, uh, this is some of the functionalities just to kind of show how our competitors are doing. I would actually do an XY in the, uh, I didn't have enough time to put the XY thing, but uh, <coughs> this one is uh, just uh, trying to show these are the top competitors. Uh, Sports Engine is actually backed by NBC and uh, they all play in certain areas. Nobody plays in the whole ecosystem as of today. So what's the market size? Market size as of today for sports technology and social media aspects is, is way uh, well above 100 billion. But we wanted to kind of bring it down to further concentration of sports management and sports mobile app. It's almost like $11 billion as of today with a 10 to 15% growth year over year. Uh, so our target for the first five years is a $100 million ARR. Everything is annual recurrent revenue. So we are going after 100 million, which is still less than 1% of the market. Uh, and uh, in fact, it will be way less than 1% of market in five years from now, because that's when we are targeting our 100 million ARR. Uh, this is a high level estimate on how we're gonna get that. Uh, what is our business model? Business model is B2B software. We have subscription and transaction fee, small subscription fee every month. And then we take a transaction fee for every transaction that goes through our system, any of our systems. And the B2C app is the usual one, premium, premium and with, with ads, premium without ads, transaction, merchandising. And we are most of, we currently already have 100,000 members that use our SaaS B2B platforms. So once uh, the social media apps not uh, launched yet, it's in Q4. Once we launch, we'll migrate them into our apps. Traction, uh, we've completed the version one of four of our five products. Uh, we have deployed uh, the LMS in four sports organizations. We have deployed our membership into three organizations, even management in four organizations, and uh, currently building the framework for the B2C social media app. 
and we are in talks with 1,000 teams to deliver our uh, club software as of August 1st. Uh, these are our uh, existing clients uh, who have bought us. Uh, they are our beta clients trying our MVP products. USA Water Ski, Shooting, Alliance is a softball uh, management team. USA Cycling uses our LMS system. Table Tennis uses our LMS system. And uh, the three uh, clubs down are the ones who are bringing in the 1,000 teams for, uh, for club software. And uh, we are uh, right now bootstrapped. And uh, we are six months old. And we, plan, we are pretty decent for the next six months. So we'll start pitching to our, our uh, to investors. We are looking for institutional investors who have the right connections. We are not uh, currently looking uh, for just money. We need the network and connection to grow. So uh, uh, we would be spending it in marketing, sales, and product development. Uh, going, uh, we said 2 million. Our CFO looked at it and they said, hey, we can go up to 5 million. So we're trying to go for 5 million at this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the management team. I'm the only full-time uh, person working. Everybody else is fractional. I've just told them that, hey, once we get the funding, I'll bring you guys all full-time. But uh, I've got a CTO, CPO, I've got a CFO, and uh, currently funded by uh, a seed fund investor who also happens to be my wife. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So before we do the questions, I have to say that was a just a great looking deck in mm -hmm. itself. The, the graphics uh, look wonderful. So thank you. Good job on that. Uh, my question was how you, you talked about the financial transactions. Um, are you running transactions through just a normal Venmo, PayPal, cash, or uh, do you have your own uh, transaction processing system? Uh, we do not have a transaction processing system. We go through Stripe. Currently, we are integrated with Stripe, but we plan to integrate with PayPal and uh, uh, in the future. But currently, all transactions go through Stripe. Okay. Do you have, um, is there IP here? Uh, in other words, for, can Roger Goodell and his $100 million a month income just say, hey, what a great idea, and do it for all the entire NFL? Uh, yes, we do have, uh, our, our systems uh, have business logic and, uh, and uh, and trademarks that we have already applied. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we are in talks with NFL. Uh, but, uh, uh, for our, but the thing is most of our systems are more towards uh, clubs and teams and companies who have the funding, they would normally go for their own proprietary system. And, uh, and most of the NFLs and NHLs, they are billion dollar companies and they have enough funding to build. They will probably, what will they need from us is data insights. They'll say, where is the, the growth going? Which states are more uh, uh, like watching my sports so that I can spend more uh, campaign funding there and things like that. So, so your secret sauce is in the data insights and that's what you really need to protect and show them that they can't do it without you, correct? Right? Uh, to a certain extent, but again, there is also, as I as mentioned, the heart of the thing is about also serving the underserved. We think that uh, having the heart is also very important than the also having a brain. So we need to connect both the heart and the brain to the to an extent that it is the secret sauce. I completely agree. Bring it to the front of your message. It will yeah. be completely different. So in bringing gaming to into education, one of the biggest barriers to entry is making sure that the users, i.e. the teachers, uh, are the ones that uh, find the app to be easily understood and enjoyable to use, okay? How have you overcome that uh, barrier to entry? So with, with this training, we provide only the software and the, and the organizations put their own content in. Uh, so we provide a video content, we, you can pause. So our software has functionalities where uh, you cannot just turn it on and just go do your laundry. Mm -hmm. It will uh, pop up questions in between to answer. If you don't answer it, it will put you back in. Those functionalities are built, but the content is built by the organization. And what we provide is an integrated platform. All of our products are integrated. You do a, a referee does the necessary testing and certification. That data goes into the referee's profile in the member management system. So they know that he's up to date and they, they can actually utilize him in certain aspects. So the, the key is more of uh, integration and, uh, and uh, providing them an opportunity to utilize our LMS as a content and they can upload their content. I understand that. 
But what you just described to me was more features rather than user experience. So for the user experience, I, uh, uh, we, yes, we do have, as I mentioned, we are, we are USA Cycling and folks are already utilizing our platform mm -hmm. and they constantly provide us necessary feedback on what, uh, what works. USA Water Ski, USA Shooting and uh, USA Cycling and Table Tennis, all of them use our element system currently. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if I can, BG, the other thing we're running, we're actively doing right now is we're running workshops with each of these groups. Um, we just had one yesterday actually with uh, some of the clubs, mm -hmm. but uh, that we would look to do the same thing for each of the target user groups so that we get the feedback. We're trying to, as BG says, lower this barrier to entry, understand what the, is missing in the marketplace right mm -hmm. now and build something that feels like it. So workshops with, is probably a good answer for what you're Yeah, yeah we are conducting workshops currently, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a great presentation and a lot of information. One small suggestion, it would be nice if you in a few, few sentences rather than all the thing. It's for the audience. So you can't read all that. So you may want to improve that, simplify it, it will be great. But the other one is, what is that I sports? What language is it? I. Yeah, it, it's an I where for an yeah. a, athlete, uh, uh, kind of an I, but uh, I sports comes from, initially we started the company as a professional services, integral sports. Uh, and uh, from that we took the I sports as, as uh, just the player sports. People have to think what that, uh, if it falls down somewhere <laughs> and they open it, what is this? Sports, I can understand, Z sounds like S. Sports, yes, but that is what is that? So, so that is, yeah, that is basically our history of where we came from. Well, it could be interactive sports. Uh, actually, our platforms are uh, designed in a way where it is not only for physical sports, we are already talking to e gaming uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to bridge the gap. Our social media app will bridge the gap of physical sports and gaming, where you will a, a person will have. The same person can be uh, have two avatars within the same profile, but one avatar is, hey, I play golf and I play tennis, but I also play Frontier and other things mm -hmm. like that. So we're trying to bring the world of uh, both uh, gaming and uh, and uh, uh, physical sports. When I saw the eye, I assumed it was tech immediately. So, so we'll probably use that in the future. <laughs> I think AJ had a question. Yeah, is so so I like a lot of the features. Um, I was just thinking is a lot of youth sports goes through high schools and colleges. And do you have any plans to be available in that area as well? Yes, yes. So uh, all our products, uh, as it, it will scale the whole ecosystem. And in fact, uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, Dennis here had provided us some context uh, on on those organizations and Mike's already following up with them for high school and uh, and uh, colleges, universities. Yes. So could you keep a player's profile uh, throughout their their career? That is the plan. Okay, so it's not that just, the plan. I have to register my name uh, with each league I join and I've got six separate identities on iSports. When I start to populate it, it says, is this you? And puts it and, and that is the same logic which will tie the social media app to the okay. in. So this is a permanent record. This is what as long as they want to, yeah. As long as, they, uh, even if they are inactive players, their record will still be there with the organization from with whom they had the inactive records. Okay. But we don't own the records. Okay. The organization owns the records. So this is what my teachers warned me about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As far as I know, every state has an organization that deals with all of the youth sports. There are at least 10,000 people that actively referee sports just within the state of Florida. If you can get to those major organizations and show how not only they can use it, but all their organizations can use it, your growth could be explosive. And uh, yes, uh, very much. And that is why right now we have all word of mouth sales. There's nothing where, uh, in fact, I have borrowed uh, sales foods from, uh, from the other company my wife runs to kind of help me with it but uh, that's why the funding is required we put all our funding in uh, and i've got 40 engineers we just are developing things out because if you want to build a, uh, in the future we are looking at uh, uh, having uh, scoring apps we are looking at uh, uh, fantasy games even uh, legalized betting all the products will be available so right now we are fully focused on development but we need some funding to 
stretch the boots on the ground to get really get sales go. And uh, that's where we are planning to go next. If you need help on gamifying your your app, just let me know. Definitely. That would be something interesting if you could if you could give badges for things for involvement, sort of like uh, Foursquare did 10, 12 years ago. And uh, these other these other things are doing now, like to doist. If you do so much in terms of productivity, you get another batch, you get to move up. So that might keep people, especially competitive people like athletes. It's like I can get another, it's called a medal. So I can get another medal if I invite my friends. And, uh, and so the reason we went B2B first before B2C is to kind of set the credibility with the organizations. Once you have the credibility of the organizations, athletes and fans join your social media app because. You're pretty much saying that, hey, I'm authorized by these. But what we give the B2B organizations is, hey, you, I'm going to send everybody who says they, have, uh, they like you uh, ice hockey, I'm going to give them a chance to become a member, be part of it. So I'm providing growth to your organization. So you market me on, on the other way around so that both of the organizations are being benefited. So the thought process is batches, free tickets, free uh, event registration, free membership, free kits. Pretty much everything will be provided through the social media app so that they can start playing with the uh, things. Yeah. I don't know if you have a tagline yet, but something along the lines of play well together. Especially if you want to start bringing in some of the underserved communities and talking about really making this inclusive and giving people access. Did you, did you trademark that? <laughs> <laughs> he is 5%, yeah, but I can uh, I'll raise you to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> To the, to the patent office. He, he gets 5%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think, um, yeah, yeah we, we need taglines. We, uh, even the website's currently being built, uh, as I mentioned, four or five months in. Uh, we're just trying to keep the current clients happy uh, because we're already uh, servicing 50,000 plus users. Uh, and uh, the social media app, uh, we, have, we want to make sure it's, it, the market is crowded, but not for sports specifically. You go to Facebook, you go to Twitter, you go to uh, all of this sports is a piece of the, the thing. There's not a one place where we only talk sports. We talk about events, uh, fantasy things. So we think that is a major opportunity, but you have to do it well. You just cannot come up with a product which is half-baked. All right. Uh, well, then we have the final question, and that is, what can we as a community do for you? Uh, couple of things. One is, uh, as I said, we are looking for investment. So any institutional investment connections you might have, please let us know. Second is word of mouth. We are an uh, Orlando-based uh, tech uh, sports uh, task product company. And uh, if you could just talk to your clubs or you know somebody who plays sports, saying that, hey, have you checked out uh, the clubs and the teams that have you checked this software? And uh, we, we are in the initial stages, we are trying to get only user engagement. So, Pretty much software is given for free. It's just user that we need in the database because it's insights, which is very important. So we will work with any clubs, any teams uh, that are interested to try us out. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so next week we are still working on finding our speakers. So if anybody would like to uh, present their company, AJ, uh, just go to one million cups.com slash Orlando uh, and just fill out the application. If you have presented elsewhere uh, or would like to present elsewhere, uh, when you go to that uh, one million cups.com slash Orlando, uh, your application information is already there. You just have to specify that you want to speak at our organization. Uh, and then once you do that, then you can also then bounce around to chapters that are holding Zoom meetings and present there as well. So it's a it's a great way to uh, to hone your presentation uh, in a number of different places uh, just by going online. So we Josh, I know, went to three meetings in one day, just bouncing time zones. Uh, so that's certainly something you can do. But otherwise, uh, download the chat if you're online. Uh, if you want to copy the chat uh, and you're here, email me and I can email it to you. Uh, be sure to connect with somebody that you have met here today. Uh, meet for coffee, meet for lunch, have a Zoom call, and then join us on meetup.com. That's where we promote most of these events. 
uh, also on our Facebook page uh, and Twitter. So uh, invite a friend, uh, share our social media messages, and we will see you all in 167 hours. <laughs>